two great new features that were added as part of ES6 are promises and the async await feature. Now, it's important to understand what these are so you understand how they can and can't work together. A sync and a wait, really what this is doing is it's wrapping something inside of a promise. So let's do a, a quick review of what a promise does, how it works, and then talk about how to combine a sync and a wait with promises. So I have a function here. It's simply calling another function, passing a number to it. This function is going to return something back here, and then whatever the return is, I'm going to log that out. So let's run the function. And p, the value I'm logging out, is a promise pending. So it's a promise that has not been resolved yet. And that's because I'm returning this whole thing here. This promise is being sent back, put into p. p is the promise not resolved because I haven't called resolve or reject. Now, if I put that inside of here, what I'm doing, or here, let's actually put uh, ms as the value. So the thousand that gets passed in here, that's what I'm going to resolve with. So I'll run this again. Now I have a promise resolved with the value 1000. So that's what's being put into here is the promise that is resolved. If I reject it, so my promise fails, run that. Okay, what happened here? Well, a whole bunch of stuff. Mostly it's the fact that there was an error. So an error happened that came back. It is a promise still. There's a wrapper promise that goes around all of this stuff. The promise was rejected and the value was an actual error object. So there's an error taking place. That's what all these notes are all about. And at the very end, this is an important one to take note of here. Unhandled promise rejection. This is something that's required now in Node, in the later versions of Node. You have to catch the error. If there is a rejection from a promise, you need to catch it or you will get this error. If you do any work with Cordova, you've likely seen this error at some point. There was something wrong in the code, so it didn't function properly. The promise came back with an error and that wasn't caught. There was no handling for that error. That's now a requirement in Node. So we need to do that. Okay, we'll say, let's put the catch inside of here. So I'm adding a catch onto the end of this catching the error to write this out. Now let's see what I get back. Okay, there's my error. That's the one that's being written out here. And then P, this is actually the first line of code. This is still my pending promise. So I've called this function. I got back a promise. I'm writing out the promise. The promise at this point is still pending. And then inside that promise, I'm calling reject, which is triggering the error, which makes the catch run, which writes out this message. Now let's take a look and see what happens here if we wrap this in a sync and await. So I'm going to take that catch off. So we're back to our original. There's the error. So we'll make this a resolve. So everything's all happy and working. Clear. Run this again. There we are. So we have our resolve promise with the value 1000 in it. Now I'm going to make my function asynchronous. So async function, and then I'm going to put an await because I want to wait for the answer to come back from here to put it into this. We'll take a look and see what happens. Okay, cool. Now P is no longer a promise. It's the value that came back. So await said, we're going to wait for this thing to resolve and it's come back. So really what it's done is it's wrapped a promise around the promise here. So this one is waiting for this one to resolve and when it does the value gets passed along. Great, so that works fine with the resolve. What about with the reject? Same problem. So this is the issue with a sync and a wait with promises. If everything doesn't work well then you get this rejection error and then everything fails and it just kind of cascades up saying hey you know what there's still a problem here. So how do we deal with that? Well, we could tack that catch onto the end here. There's my error coming up here. That worked fine. And then this line happens afterwards now. After the await has run, 
we get the result back from here. P is now undefined. So there was no value that was coming back from this whole thing. The catch handled the error. Nothing came back. So therefore, P is still undefined. I prefer to come down here and actually do it inside of this. Same answer, same result. The way we do it, whether the catch is here or the catch is down here, the promise is coming back and this thing is awaiting the promise. So we've got this other delay that's wrapped around this function. We're waiting for the answer to come back from this initial promise. We have a promise object here in place of the function delay. Ours is failing, which is making the catch run with the error statement. Then we have undefined for p. So that means if you're using a wait and a sync, I can't really chain on a then to the await. And if this function failed, I've got a problem here is that this thing might have nothing at all. It may be undefined. So we need to, if we are calling a function, which is returning a promise to us, and we're using a sync and a wait, we need to, and if you're doing this, I'm assuming that you're not doing that typical delay 1000 dot then with some function dot catch. And this would have the error inside of it like this. So you can still write it like this, but if you're going to chain on the await in front of it, then what's coming back is not the thing that you can chain the then onto. I can't come here and say p dot then. This is not going to work because p could be undefined like it is here. So as soon as you put the await in front of this, you can no longer chain the then onto the result. It is going to be the result from the resolve that comes back. So we need to check and see if we actually got something back from the resolve. Okay, so let's comment this one out. We're not doing this one anymore. there's our, our statement. So we need to wrap an if statement around this. If you put the await in front of your promise that's being returned, you're no longer getting the promise back that you can chain the then onto. What's happening is you're getting the actual value that was resolved here. So if I get rid of the error and I go back to resolve, there. Now I'm getting the value right here. So this is response from promise. So that works. Now let's try it with set timeout. So we're actually creating a delay and that works as well. The await is going to wait for the resolve to happen. That's what this is doing. So it's like the other promise wrapped around the function the function's returning the promise, but this means we can't chain the then onto this result. We're actually going to be getting the result here, not the promise itself. And that's it. That's using a sync and a wait together. So I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.